Because I would challenge anybody in here to, mo to, to point to me which Palestinian is Hamas and which one is an innocent civilian. Which is the one, the, the child that was poking the Israeli children, the, ch the children that were poking other Israeli children, and which ones exactly are the innocent ones? Which are the ones that were standing by somewhere along the border saying, no, turn around. No, return that person. No, don't take that person hostage. No, don't conduct that rape, that murder, that beheading, that whatever. I feel very strongly that the five-year-old who currently is having a hard time being able to get access to any water, to any food, has nothing to do with Hamas. That you can't blame the children who are living in Gaza for the actions of adults that don't represent them. The gentlelady is recognized for five minutes on her amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The actions of Hamas, particularly the reprehensible attack on October 7th, are beyond justification. They've destabilized the region and destroyed and changed lives forever. I condemn these attacks and I support Israel's right to defend itself and echo the calls for Hamas to immediately release all hostages. But in our pursuit of security, we can't lose our humanity. The sanctions proposed in this bill, while aimed at upholding peace, potentially restrict humanitarian aid from reaching innocent Palestinians in need. The situation in Gaza is dire, and it's not about politics, it's about people. It's about preventing a humanitarian catastrophe. So I'm thankful for the Biden administration's efforts, especially the recent breakthrough allowing aid trucks through the Rafah crossing. However, this bill in its current form risks undermining these diplomatic and human humanitarian efforts. The original draft, Mr. Mast's own original draft of this bill had a more straightforward humanitarian exemption, one that provided a more viable pathway for essential aid, food, medicine, and other life-saving supplies to reach those trying to survive in Gaza. Both the State Department and the Treasury Department prefer this version of the humanitarian exemption to ensure that humanitarian assistance can get in. And so I was incredibly disappointed to see that the majority modified this humanitarian clause by requiring a case-by-case -case waiver, which will inevitably slow down the provision of assistance. All my amendment would do is return to the original language, again, the original language in Mr. Mast's own original draft, which provides an exemption only for the life-saving necessary humanitarian assistance to those most in need. I urge my colleagues to support this common sense amendment that takes the humanitarian exemption back to Mr. Mast's own original draft, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for offering an amendment. I disagree with your amendment, and the purpose of us amending any piece of legislation is to make the bill better, to make the legislation better. And my friend, Mr. Moskowitz, I think he spoke very passionately, very eloquently, and from the heart about what it is that we're dealing with here. And I think if you reflect on what he said, and to reflect on what you just said, uh, my colleague, Ms. Jacobs, any assistance should be slowed down. Any assistance. Because I would challenge anybody in here to, mo to, to point to me which Palestinian is Hamas and which one is an innocent civilian. To perhaps bring in equivalencies in some part, have the conversation of would this be something we would talk about immediately following Pearl Harbor or immediately following 9-11? I'll be happy to yield to you in a moment if you like. I see you reaching for your button. I, and I would argue that shouldn't be something that we should, should argue, that, that after Pearl Harbor, after 9-11, we should seek ceasefire, seek not having the greatest violence of action uh, over, over anybody that comes against us, seek uh, finding ways to, to support them and assist them in the most expedient way. That, that would be the opposite of what I would propose supporting. It looks like you want to have a dialogue on this. I'm happy to do so. Well, thank you, Mr. Mastin. And I think we both agree that Israel has a right to defend itself, should be doing everything it can to get the hostages back. 
I think what we disagree on is this question of humanitarian assistance and the humanitarian circumstances in Gaza. And I think it is not only about the Palestinian children, it's about our own humanity. That is the reason why we should make sure humanitarian assistance should get in. And, and to your comparison to after Pearl Harbor, after Pearl Harbor, the U.S. government put American citizens of Japanese descent into camps because we let our fear and our anger get in the way of our humanity. And I wish that there had been members of Congress who were there saying that we need to pause, we need to make sure we are doing the humanitarian thing in addition to doing the security thing, and that actually doing the humanitarian thing in the long term is better for our and for Israel's safety and security. Thank you. I support uh, Representative Jacobs' amendment. One of the most difficult that I really appreciate her uh, response to Mr. Mass. One of the most difficult and daunting events that happened in the United States was 9-11. I voted because I wanted to go and get everyone that was involved. ISIS came later, Al-Qaeda. But I didn't want to, and if we bombed anywhere and we did make mistakes then, that we should make sure that we were able to make sure that our humanitarian side prevailed and we gave and give assistance to those in need and not just say we don't care about innocent individuals because then we lose our humanitarian argument completely this Hamas terrorist group there's nothing that's humane about them but Hamas is not all of the Palestinian people. It's not the Palestinian. We've got to make sure that that distinction is clearly made. Hamas is not the Palestinian people. I can recall times in the United States of America where a black person would be accused of something, and as a result, the whole town was wiped out and no aid coming in. Those that commit the crime, we've got to go after them. Your, this amendment restores what I you know, know was the humanitarian exemption that was introduced in the version of the bill, which I would have liked to have seen retained. I believe it offers a clear and transparent, transparent and vetted pathway to provide crucial life-saving materials to those suffering in Gaza. And I think when we show that, that helps us and helps them on the ground to point out those who are members of Hamas. Such exemptions have proven effective throughout American sanctions policy. Humanitarian relief in Gaza is morally the right thing to do, but also in America's foreign policy interests. A waiver as opposed to an exception will create more bureaucratic and more de-risking by leading humanitarian organizations. 